Humble Mug. Hello, and welcome to the Humble Lounge, where we sit down to talk a little more casually about certain topics that come to mind from time to time on this gaming journey. Today, I want to talk about how playing certain remakes, ROM hacks, as well as ports of games to systems I never owned as a kid have helped me rediscover my childhood favorites in interesting and fresh ways. This is something I wasn't originally planning to talk about, but it's something that has just kind of manifested itself in front of me over these last few days, so I wanted to go ahead and talk about it here, as the lounge is meant to be like a journal entry anyway, that's what it's for. So first, I'm going to talk about some old Game Boy games that received a fresh coat of paint, a game so reminiscent of Halo that I had to talk about it, a remake of a game I never knew existed until now, and a really, really special port of a game that was released just this year for an underrated portable console that's essentially on life support currently. And before I begin, if there are any games you've been playing recently that make you feel like a kid again, let me know down below. When I think back to some of the first games I played on my original Game Boy, even before Pokemon Blue, there are three games that first come to mind. Super Mario Land, Super Mario Land 2, and The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. How fitting is it then that there are some enhancements made to all three of these games by this wonderful human Ivan Delgado aka Torres who has done some work for companies like Limited Run Games. Now, I've never talked to this person, but I wanted to give them a quick shout out as not only have they done some great work on some classics as I had just mentioned, but they also have a website that gives a how-to guide on how they enhance these games for those aspiring to do things like this, which just makes my DIY community loving heart happy. In the case of the Super Mario Land 1 and 2 games, the DX remakes that Torres has made turn those original black and white graphics into a strikingly beautiful full-color reimagining of them. And in the case of Super Mario Land 1 DX, even the main Mario sprite has been completely redone. A feature I discovered by accident, because I can't read apparently, is that when on the overworld at any point in Super Mario Land 2 DX, you can switch between playing as Mario or Luigi. And this was such a cool feature to me, I mean, Nintendo let you do this in Super Mario Bros. 2, but then for some reason they just never really let you do this again on the fly like that in between levels until way later in some of the more modern Mario games. As for the games themselves, if you're a Mario fan but have never played any of these, they are definitely worth playing. They are really short games, which is a good or a bad thing depending on your perspective, but Super Mario Land has some of the most enjoyable Mario music of all time, and Super Mario Land 2 is easily one of the most creative Mario games out there. And in the case of Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Tora has actually edited some of the text so that it's easier to read and fix some typos and things like that, which is also really nice. I played both Super Mario Land DX and Super Mario Land 2 DX on my 2DS recently, try to say that five times fast, and played Super Mario Land 2 all the way through, and seeing them in full color after all these years was just so nice. The next game I wanted to mention I discovered through That Video Game Show, who always shares some really sick games that have somehow slipped under everyone's radar. Now, to my credit, I didn't own a PlayStation Vita in its heyday, so I'm arriving to this party way late, but man, is it still a good time. In fact, the rest of the games that I'm talking about have all been games that I'm currently playing on my Vita. The first game in question is Nova, which stands for Near Orbit Vanguard Alliance. Super sci-fi sounding, right? This is actually a PlayStation Portable mini game, and when I saw the footage for this game from that video game show, I had to give it a try. You see, ever since I first saw Metroid Prime Hunters on the DS back in the day, I've always wanted some kind of handheld Halo experience. And no, I don't mean playing Halo 2 on a Steam Deck or something, that is cool to be fair, but I mean playing a Halo game that was developed with a handheld system in mind. I don't know, maybe I'm weird, but my 10 year old self really wanted a bite sized Halo experience on the go. And through Nova, I feel like I finally found that. It is essentially an impersonation of Halo, it's very inspired by that series. And I know it's not the same thing, but the guns and environments feel really similar. And there's even an AI companion that could basically be Cortana's cousin. I've activated your mag boots, but you'll have to manage your oxygen supply. And to add on to all of that, there's also some choir heavy music in the background that gives me all of those classic Halo vibes. This game came out in 2010, so right on the heels of Halo Reach, and I think if I would have had a PlayStation Portable back then, this would have been the game that gave me that handheld Halo craving that I was looking for back then when I was younger. At least now I'm getting that fix as an adult, and it's even better playing it on my Vita thanks to that extra joystick. The next game I've talked about a couple times in some of my videos now, and that one is Final Fantasy Adventure. Now, the name Final Fantasy Adventure is actually a bit of a misnomer, as this game is really the first entry in the Seiken Densetsu series, or the Mana series as we know it here in the States. To be honest, Square just called it Final Fantasy here so that they could hopefully boost some sales. You can actually get this game on the Switch now too, thanks to the collection of Mana, by the way. 
Again, this was another original Game Boy game I played before Pokemon Blue changed my life, and I'll go ahead and throw in Star Saver and Wario Land on the screen now too so you can see the whole pre-Pokemon family that I spent time with. This was a game I discovered by accident and when I saw the title, I thought maybe this is related to what I'm thinking it is, and you can only imagine my surprise when I found out that there was a full-blown remake of Final Fantasy Adventure on the Vita called Adventures of Mana. Oh my gosh, this is so freaking awesome. The graphics are fantastic, and I'm amazed that we don't have a version of this on the PlayStation 4, 5, or the Switch. It seems to be a pretty much one-to-one -one remake of the original game with enhanced graphics, really well implemented but optional touchscreen controls, and quality of life improvements like script fixes and things like that. Final Fantasy Adventure holds a special place in my heart because it was my first taste of a Zelda type of game, and this was my first Final Fantasy branded experience I ever had, and I played this even before I played Link's Awakening, which was my first Zelda game. And though I am a little biased, I still think this game holds up greatly, and it does certain things that even Zelda games weren't really doing back then. If you don't really have a way to get a hold of Adventures of Mana right now, you can always play the original on the Game Boy or on the Switch, but I will say playing it on the Vita with these new graphics and everything is such a nice way to play this game. I also wanted to make sure I mentioned this because I really appreciated this. The remake gives you the option to listen to the original Game Boy soundtrack instead of the remade one. And while I tend to enjoy remade soundtracks just as much as the original, for some reason it just felt right to have that original music here. It made me almost teary-eyed to experience this game again, if I'm being honest. The last but certainly not least interesting game I wanted to talk about is a game that was almost lost to time, but thanks to some passionate people we still have it, and it just received a port to the PlayStation Vita this year. The game is called Doom RPG, and it was an early mobile phone game developed by id Software. And when I say early mobile phones, think old school flip phones from Nokia and stuff like that. It's a really unique first-person dungeon crawler game set in the Doom universe, and being both a Doom fan and a fan of dungeon crawlers, when I found out this game existed years and years later, it really intrigued me. It was successful enough to spawn a sequel, Doom 2 RPG, and the engine for both of these games was used later to create the Nintendo DS game Orcs and Elves, which is also a banger. However, none of these games have been ported onto other systems officially. Now, I actually talked a little to the person responsible for this port, Jakubito, who reverse engineered the Doom RPG PC port by the GEC team to make this game possible to play on the Vita. And Jakubito confirmed that a Doom 2 RPG port to the Vita is in progress as well. Now, I did attempt to play Doom RPG on the PC, and this is not a slight to the GEC team by any stretch of the imagination since they're responsible for making any of this happen in the first place, but playing the game on anything other than a handheld system just felt wrong to me since this thing was meant to run on stuff like, I don't know, the original Motorola Razr. So when I saw that this was ported to the Vita, I was so freaking excited. It completely changed my plans for the night, and I happily blasted through demons and undead soldiers and talked to hilarious NPCs and found bundles of keycards. This game is known for not taking itself seriously, so the NPCs will say a lot of off-the-wall and fourth-wall breaking things, and the gameplay is actually really great if you're a fan of dungeon crawlers, as there is a sort of elemental weakness system thanks to the different guns and weapons that you get, and it's just so cool, bizarre, and exciting to see an RPG in the Doom universe. It should have never happened, but it did, and it makes sense once you have it in your hands. Speaking of having it in your hands, it plays like a dream on the Vita, and so I'm just so happy with this. So yeah, just one more time, I wanted to give another quick shout out to everyone who has helped me cultivate this recent, reimagined, facelifted nostalgia trip that I'm so thankful for. And I also want to encourage you to let me know of any remakes, hacks, ports, or whatever you may have been playing recently that have really brought your love for a classic game back to life, or allowed you to experience a classic game for the first time in an optimized way. Let this be a reminder to you to explore systems that were ignored or that you personally missed out on as you never know what might be out there waiting for you and check in on indie projects like these because oftentimes people are coming out with some fantastic stuff and if there's a system you've got lying around that you haven't touched in ages, dust it off because there's a strong chance that something new is waiting for you right now. If you're still here, thanks so much for watching and as always, stay humble.